So here we go. This is the Pegasus scroll bandsaw. Let's unbox this. It does come with instructions, but Bob has put it together once before, so... Once or twice. <laughs> and sometimes, if you look at this, it's almost easier to figure out than sometimes yeah. try to follow the instructions. So I'm working, I'm rewriting the instructions, so oh, don't be intimidated by them. <laughs> That's where you fold the table down, the, the saw down to, so they want it to have okay. a little bit more durable there. I have a special set of screws for those. One of the things that's really nice about this, most of this saw, is that the carry folds. So you only need one wrench. Okay. What is it, a half inch? Uh, the metric, probably like 13 millimeters. Oh, 13 millimeters. 12 or 13. How much does the pencil weigh? The box is over 250, around 200 pounds. Okay. So the bandsaw itself is the majority of that weight. Okay. It's all cast iron, cast iron table, so they they build it to, to last. Mm -hmm. He says a three quarter horsepower. Yeah, three quarter horsepower. Motor. motor. Somebody's going to ask, is, uh, can you resaw with this? No, this is really not built for resawing. It's the biggest blade you can use is an 8 inch, so you'd be hard pressed to resaw with any accuracy yep. with a blade that small. And I would probably do it, but if I were to do it, I would put a Put a cut in the bottom, and the top and the bottom of the table saw first, and if you use mm -hmm. to just finish off the, the middle. When you're laying this out, the, when you're putting it together, the best way to do it is just put the legs on first, and then you can see it's easy to see which supports go where. Mm -hmm. And just remember, as you're putting it together, you're putting it together upside down, so you want the the ledge to be, the ledge to be up. Because, as you said, I put this together a couple times, more than once in the same song. <laughs> Now 
No, I normally flip it right side up before I tighten the last ones up because then it helps to level it to where you're putting it on the floor. This way, so that the, it's sitting just like it is. Oh, oh you want like like just like this? No, no, that like the saw is. Okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. Move this out of the way. Trip on anything when we lift it. Sit nice, so you can have to. This will this will pivot for uh, 45 degrees. Um, the tilt, the yes. table. Yep, the table is 45 degrees one way. Uh, not quite as far the other way because the blade gets. Oh, there. yep. But, and it comes with the number 12 blade already on it, but we'll adjust that and make sure that it's all perfect before we fire it up. And here's a little trick that took me a while to find out. Getting this last screw in the back here. You can't get to it easily unless you pull this, unless you loosen this up. This is the lever you, if you want to change the speeds. If the two speed saw, I leave it on the high speed for woodworking. If I were doing metal working or something like that, you want to slow it down so you can switch up pulley just like you would with a drill press. Okay. And you move this motor forward to move it on the pulley. But when you move that forward, it also gives you space to get this last bolt in. screws but when it's shipped they're put in position and you put the piece on top of them so I've had people come and reach out to me because they thought these were missing but they didn't check on oh, the okay. saw start. Oh so there's set pins and then two screws? Yes. Okay. And the way to know how to position this is a little dial indicator here for the angle should always be facing you mm. as you're using the saw.
here you asked earlier if it tilts both ways. It does, but most of the time I only tilt it one way. It doesn't tilt far this way because the the thing itself, the frame itself gets in the way. So this bolt here that I'm putting in here allows you to set you can put this bolt and set it exactly square to the thing. So you can easily bring it back to oh, wow. square. Okay. So we can adjust that once we get this perfectly squared. Now, by law, we have to send this to you with these plastic shields in the way. But if you've ever worked with plexiglass and saw this before, you'll notice that plexiglass attracts sawdust like nothing else. Yes. So within the first five minutes or so of your cutting, these are going to be covered in sawdust. And by law, these are a safety feature. But in many ways, I find them less useful than anything else. So I end up taking these off almost the time. Can I take these out for yours? Yes, you can. Okay. Set that wrench. Oh, this one? The one that's in front of me? No, the wrench. Oh. That was cool. Oh, socket. I think I need a socket. Yes, I need some more. Yes. Yep. I use the number 10, the 10 millimeter and the 12 millimeter more than any other socket. And I do believe that because they correspond close to three eighths and half inch. And with, if you're taking this out at home, you always take the nut and washer and this side off first because it's threaded through there. So if you try to unscrew the Allen screw, it's not going to come out because the nut is locking in place. And this. When you take this out, it actually takes the, this is also what the bit holds the bearing in place. And the bearing is what makes this saw special because the bearing is why we can use blades this small. And considering that the blade that's on here right now is one of the largest we sell, we go a lot smaller than that. So that's the number 12 you said? Yep, it comes with a number 12 and a number 9. So and this was a number 9? Yep. Okay. Pretty small to me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask if you wanted me to switch to the 12, but I realized uh, to the 9 because I do most of my things with the 9, but I realized that when you're learning, it's probably better off starting yeah. with the 12. <laughs> and what you want is you want to Let me dull that blade out first. <laughs> yes. When you adjust this, you want this bearing to be just kissing the back of the blade. Yeah, because you want the blade, when you put it in, into use, to slide back into that slot. down, put your washer and nut back on, so nothing loosens up. So this, this adjustment on this bearing is only front and back, not left and right? Correct. Okay. And you can do that somewhat with the tracking adjustment as well when you go to track it, but this is pretty well centered. I wasn't going to do much with the tracking on that, so it's time to adjust the bearing. When you change blades or anything like that, you need to adjust both the tracking so it's riding in the center of the tire and how it sits on this bearing. Okay. And it's the top and bottom. The bottom looks pretty good right now. So let's just check and make sure that the tracking is holding steady with the saw off. And you know, when you're doing it, you always turn the bottom because that's where most of the thing is. And you can see it's tracking off. So it's quite, I always check it by hand before I turn it on. Before I turn it on. <laughs> so we've got. The way I always remember this, which direction to turn the knob, is if you're tightening, you're pushing the bottom out, which is going to push the blade this way. It's going to tilt the wheel this way. Okay. And small increments, quarter turn or less. Take it back. And it slipped off. That's... Didn't have a track enough. This gives me a chance to show you how to put the wheel on, put it on the wheel. Because this is a little trickier with such a small blade. Such a small blade, yeah. If 
you're looking at the spring inside, the tension is about the point that it's just starting to register on there. That's tensioning, but when you when you flick it, it should sound almost like a scroll saw. No chance of getting a spiral blade for us, right? No, it's <laughs> not just they have, I know. The tire is the problem. Yeah. I mean, in general, it's a good idea. And I've been working with the factory to figure out if we can do that. Because we do, if you look at the tire on this, it's not like a normal rubber bandsaw tire. This is a material that's closer to Kevlar. And because okay. our blades are so small, that the teeth are going to be on, on the tire. Unlike most bandsaws, where you kind of position them with the crown of the, the wheel to get the teeth off the. Yep. Oh, I didn't plug oh. in. <laughs> That's why there's no power. It's along with the sentry cord. Oh, okay. It, 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 the capacitor takes a bit to get going, oh, so. All right, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Bigger gauge. First woodworking show I went to, I had a an 18 gig extension cord and it wasn't, it wasn't doing it. There's a capacitor, the motor's big enough that there's a capacitor that it needs to fire up to get started. Okay. So. There we go. There she goes. Yep. Right where we want it to be as far as tracking. You can move this up and down, and in fact, more so with this saw than any other band saw, you want to make sure that you're moving this up and down to be as close to the wood, because yep. these bearings on the top and bottom have slots for the blade to go in, and that's how you make the, those slots port the, the blade as you make really tight turns. So the further it is from the bearing, the more likely it is to break a blade. And that's set up. That's pretty good. That was uh, 36 minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty good.